I want to do today another recipe from one of those restaurant trade journals. So again, this is a restaurant recipe. And this one is scallops with chorizo ragu and herb polenta. It sounds really delicious. Now, one of the reasons why I want to do this is because yesterday evening I had to drive down to the other end of the city where the harbor is. And right there at the harbor, they have a seafood market where the fishing fleet docks their boats. So this is really fresh seafood. So I bought fresh scallops for this recipe. I'm expecting this to be really delicious. So let's get into the ingredients I'm going to use. For the ragu, I'm using six ounces, which is about 170 grams of chorizo. You can use either pork or beef. I bought pork and I'm gonna use only half of this package. Then I have one half onion. I'm using a yellow onion that I've diced. You can use a red onion. I have one stalk of celery diced, one quarter cup, which is 60 milliliters of bourbon, one quarter cup, 60 milliliters of dry sherry. And I have one small garlic clove, which I'm gonna be mincing. I'm actually gonna be pushing it through a garlic press. And then I have one cup, 240 milliliters of chicken stock, and then finally one quarter cup, 60 milliliters of marinara, any tomato sauce you're comfortable using. For the polenta, I have two cups, 475 milliliters of chicken stock. You could use water. If I can use stock, I use stock. And then I have one half teaspoon of mixed herbs. This is herbs de Provence. Any kind of mixed herbs, I mean, this is a good time to go through your spice cabinet and see which herbs are getting old and start using them up. You could use a mixture of marjoram, tarragon, thyme, oregano, just a mixture of herbs. Again, one half teaspoon. Then I have one half cup, which weighs 75 grams of yellow corn meal or yellow polenta, and then salt and pepper to taste. And then for the scallops, which are in the refrigerator, I'll be showing you those in a moment. I have one pound, 454 grams of sea scallops. These were marked as divers scallops and they are dry packed. And I'll explain all that when I get to the scallops. Salt and pepper to taste, one tablespoon of an oil that has a high smoke point. I'm gonna use peanut oil. You can use corn oil. And then I've also got one tablespoon of clarified butter. So let's get into the scallops next. Okay, let's talk about my scallops here. First of all, here's a trick for buying scallops. When you're going to the fish market and you can't get your fresh fish home into the refrigerator right away, I had to go to a computer meeting after going to the store, then bring with you a little insulated cooler. I put some ice cubes in Ziploc bags and had them put my scallops right inside my cooler. They've been cold on ice since I bought them. These are divers scallops or sea scallops. And here's the really important thing about these scallops. They're dry pack scallops rather than wet pack. Wet pack scallops are soaked in a sodium tripolyphosphate liquid that the distributors use to give the scallops a longer shelf life. That's okay, however, they do two bad things. One is they make the scallops heavier because they soak up a lot of liquid, so you end up paying more for them. And when you try to sear the scallops, that liquid comes pouring out of the scallops into the skillet, so you end up steaming rather than searing your scallops. So you wanna buy fresh, dry pack scallops. They are expensive. I paid nearly $30 a pound for this one pound of scallops. It was $27.95. But I think the price is worth it to get really proper scallops. I've got a medium heavy cast iron enameled saucepan heating on the stove. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in there. This is just regular pure olive oil for frying. You could use vegetable oil. And then I'm gonna put my chorizo in there. Chorizo, by the way, is packaged in two layers of plastic. Besides that outer plastic, there's another layer of plastic inside. You wanna make sure you remove that plastic so that you're not melting it in your pot, obviously. And then my first task here is to just fry this to brown it a little bit. 
and then I'll start adding my vegetables to it. A ragu is a chunky sauce, and that's why there are chunks of vegetables and chorizo in this. Okay, my ragu has darkened a little bit, and you can see I'm starting to get some good sticking to the bottom of the pan. That's the fond. We'll be lifting that in a moment. I want to put my celery in there. My chopped onion in there. I put my garlic in a garlic press. So I can drop that in there. And then finally I want to grind some black pepper in there. Okay. And then stir this around. These vegetables will release some moisture that will help to lift that fond a little bit, but I'm going to be adding some stock and other liquids in there that will really dissolve that fond and give me a nice flavor in my ragu. Again, you can see the chunks. This is going to be a chunky sauce, and that's why they call it a ragu, as opposed to like, say, a marinara, which is a smooth tomato sauce. So my vegetables have only been cooking for a few minutes here. I don't need to cook them really tender because they're going to tenderize more as I put the liquid in here. So I'm going to start off by putting in the bourbon and cooking this down to concentrate that liquid a little bit. That will really separate that fond from the bottom of the pan and deglaze my pan. So that liquid now has reduced down pretty much just going to splash some sherry in there. Again, about a quarter cup. I don't need much. That's dry sherry. And the same thing. I'm going to boil this and reduce this down. And then I want to put my one cup of chicken stock in there. And the same thing. I want to reduce that down as well. I don't want a really thick sauce, like a spaghetti sauce. I actually want it a little bit on the watery side because I want to garnish or dress my polenta and scallops in kind of a nice thin sauce. That's what I'm looking for is a thin sauce. So I'm going to bring this up to the boil. I'm going to raise my heat up to medium-high, bring this up to a boil. Again, I'm going to reduce my heat down to about a medium-low, and then just simmer this and let this liquid concentrate as I reduce it down further. Now, my stock has concentrated quite a bit. I can tell by the way it coats the inside of the pan there that this is starting to thicken just a little bit. It's still a liquid, but it's not that soupy look that it had earlier when I first poured the stock in there. So now my last step is to put my spaghetti sauce in there, or marinara. Stir that in. I'm going to cook this for maybe three minutes at the most. Then this is done. I can cover this and set this aside. You could, if you wanted to, do this step in a day in, a day in advance like any sauce. If it sits for a day in the refrigerator, the flavors just meld and it tastes that much better. I've brought my two cups of stock up to the boil. There are my herbs de Provence. I'm going to grind some black pepper in there. And then put in maybe, I don't know, a quarter to a half teaspoon of salt. Not a lot of salt. I don't want a lot of salt in my polenta. And then stir in my cornmeal. Get that nicely stirred in. Yes, that's a plane going overhead. I'm going to reduce my heat to low. Make sure I work out those lumps, because there are a few lumps in there, as you can see. I'm going to smooth those out. And then I'm going to cook this to about, well, cook this for about 15 minutes, and then see how thick it is. You can cook your polenta as long as you want, depending upon how thick you want it. Some people 
cook it a lot and then they let it cool and turn into like a cake slice it and fry it i want it to be about the consistency of mashed potatoes that's what i'm looking for for this dish i turn the heat off on this this is a little bit wet but i'm going to leave this because i'm going to cover this and let it sit while i do my scallops and this will thicken up a lot more i might even need to just water this down a tad to get it to the texture that i want i took my scallops out of the refrigerator and opened the bag to smell them this one's a little bit torn but that'll be all right and they smell really really good that's one thing i'm always concerned about is that things don't have a fishy smell You want to dry these really well before you sear them. Okay, I'm happy with those. I'm going to just season them very lightly with salt and a little bit of pepper. Not a lot. I don't want to over season these because my polenta, rather the sauce, has a lot of seasoning in it. I tasted that sauce, by the way. Oh boy, is it, is it good. It's spicy, but it's good. Okay, a little bit of pepper on this side. And a little bit of salt. Okay, in the meantime, I have a skillet on the stove with my oil and my clarified butter in it. And as soon as I get that pan really hot, I'm going to start simmering these not simmering, searing these. In the meantime, I'm gonna move these to a dish so that they're easy to get to when I start searing them. Okay, I'm just beginning to see this pan smoke. So drop these in there carefully, because that oil is hot. And then don't touch them. Set a timer for two minutes. And if you feel a strong compulsion to start moving them around and touching them, go lie down, go do something. But don't touch them for two minutes because this is what's going to really sear them nicely. Just leave them alone. They know what they're doing. After two minutes, then you can start checking them. These have been going for more than two minutes. And once they start getting nicely browned, like this one up here I know is good. That's nicely seared. Then you can flip these over and sear the other side. Beautiful, look at that, nice searing. And then again, brown the other side and as soon as they're done, they should be done. This searing process is gonna sear the outside and cook the inside. You want them to be really tender inside. If you overcook scallops, they get really tough. How I would serve this now is put some of my polenta. This is nice. This is what I want. Kind of the consistency of mashed potatoes. Put a couple of hot seared scallops on there and then finish with my nice rich spicy chorizo ragu doesn't that look fantastic all right my last step is to see how good that tastes Okay, I so want to dig into this and see what this tastes like. I can tell that the scallop is tender just by the way it cuts. Get a little bit of my sauce there and some of my polenta. Oh, this, it smells delicious. I know this is going to taste so good it has to taste good. Yeah, yeah. That is absolutely delicious. It's got a very spicy flavor to it because of the chorizo, but 
Mmm. Oh, that is so very, very savory and rich. So excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy my scallops with chorizo, ragu, and herb polenta. To view the recipe and download a PDF version with step-by-step -step photographs, click the Jump to Recipe icon in the lower right corner or visit my website, mobilehomegourmet.com.